Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a statement of cash flow exercise that deals with the direct method. So in this session, I'm going to illustrate the direct method for preparing the operating section of the cash flow statement. We have two methods. We have the direct method and we have the indirect method for the for preparing the operating section. So today I'm going to show you the direct method and what's neat about the direct method is it will help you understand converting simply put the direct method is an illustration for converting accrual to cash. Now, sometimes you might have to convert cash to accrual, but understanding how accrual to cash works will help you in understanding cash to accrual. So that's the neat thing about the direct method. So what is the direct method? For one thing, it only applies to the operating section of the statement of cash flows. What is the operating section of the statement of cash flows? Simply put, the operating section is taking the income statement, the regular income statement that you have, and converting the income statement into, I'm going to put it in quote, cash flow income statement. So this is, this is what the operating section is, in my opinion. It's taking the income statement and showing you on a cash flow basis, are you making a profit? Now, what do you have to do? Well, for the direct method, what you do is you examine each line on the income statement, each line separately, and you convert each line and you convert each line into cash flow. Starting with sales, you would say, okay, this is my accrual sales, 186,000. You would say, okay, this is my accrual sales, but what is my cash sales? Well, what is your cash sales? How do you convert accrual to cash. Well, what you have to do is you have to examine the account on the balance sheet that's related to sales. Well, which account on the balance sheet is related to sales? And the answer is account receivable. So you are giving the balance sheet account. And you notice that account receivable went from 74 to 79. So you are starting accrual sales 186. Then your account receivable overall went up by 5,000. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean when your account receivable increases? You, when your account receivable increases, it means you are selling more on credit. You are selling more on credit. So embedded in this 186,000, an additional $5,000 of credit sales. Because here's what happened from a T account perspective. From, if you're looking at it, account receivable and you're analyzing account receivable, this is what we have. We have the beginning balance is 74. We have the ending balance is 79. We also know that we have cash, I'm sorry, sales in total of 186. So sales will increase 186. Now you want to know how much account receivable was credited. Simply put, to go from 74, 74 plus 186, minus something equal to 79. This is how we end up with 79. Well, let's see what that number is. So if I took 74, let me just make this a little smaller. If I take 74,000, which is my beginning balance plus 186 equal to 260. So if I minus 79,000, I will find out that my credit should have be should be 181. So my credit should be 181. What does that mean? It means I received in cash. This is cash received from sales. It means although my sales is showing 186, but really I have to do what? I have to, I have to report it at 181. And what is 181? Simply put, 181 represent the increase. So I have to deduct the increase in account receivable because account receivable overall went up by 5,000. It means I have to reduce my sales to 181. Simply put, my sales on cash basis is 181,000. However, on an accrual basis is 186. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of 
lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. I'm done with sales. I will move on to cost of sales 102. Well, this is my cost of sales 102. What accounts on the balance sheet influence cost of sales? Well, two things influence cost of sales. Accounts, uh, accounts payable when I buy stuff on account and inventory because my inventory turns into cost of goods sold. Now I have to analyze their effect on my cost of sales. What, what's their effect on cost of sales? Let's look at inventory first. Inventory went from 118 to 124. So if I take 124 minus 118, I will find out that my inventory went up. My inventory went up by 6,000. Well, what does that mean if my inventory went up? up by 6,000. Well, it, it means that I am buying more inventory that I am selling. Overall, I have plus 6,000 of inventory. And you can see this. It went from 118 to 124. Well, if I am if I am buying more inventory, and by the way, cost of sales is negative as a cash outflow because it's cost. Well, what I'm going to do is this. If I bought an additional 6,000 of inventory from a cash basis, I spend an additional 6,000 on inventory. That's exactly what I did. And the opposite would have been true if my inventory went if my inventory went down. Now let's take a look at my accounts payable. My accounts payable went from 41 to 53. Let's find the difference. 53 minus 41. My accounts payable went up by 12,000. Well, if accounts payable went up by 12,000, what does that mean? It means I am buying stuff but I am buying it on account. It means I am not using cash. It means I have to add back 12,000 to my cash because I am not using the cash. Why I am not using the cash? How do I know this? My accounts payable go up. Now I'm ready to net them. So if I take the difference between 102 plus six minus 12, I will find out that I paid overall for cost of sales of 96,000. So this is what my cash paid for suppliers, 96,000. I started with 102, 102, then my inventory went up. It means I bought more inventory, but my accounts payable went up even further by 12,000. And when my accounts payable go up, it means I'm not paying cash. I am buying stuff on account. It's going to save me cash. That's why the plus here. Therefore, cash paid to supplier will be 96,000. So I'm done with sales. I'm done with cost of sales. Gross profit is a is a computational figure. Operating expenses is fifty nine thousand. Now I need to analyze my operating expenses of fifty nine thousand. To analyze my operating expenses, I have to know which account are part of the operating expenses. Well, most likely, not most likely, prepaid expense is based on my operating expense. So I'm going to start by saying fifty nine thousand, and my prepaid went up. If my prepaid went up, it means remember fifty nine is an expense, so it's a negative cash outflow. If my 59,000 is my accrual and I purchase an additional 1,000 of prepaid, so notice here, I have 1,000 additional of prepaid. It means I purchased another 1,000 of prepaid. Therefore, I have to consider it as a cash outflow. Also, if you notice here, I have accumulated depreciation and I have franchise and those account changed so i need to know if i have any additional information if i look at my additional information i will find out that a fully depreciated plant asset which originally cost twenty thousand it's fully depreciated with no salvage value was sold for a thousand and i see here that normal depreciation expense was recorded during the year and the franchise was amortized so i have to be careful here i have to be careful because i am told there's depreciation expense and there's amortization. And since they are not listed as a separate line, they must be part of this 59,000. So part of this 59,000 is depreciation expense. And part of this 59,000 is amortization expense. I am not giving those as a separate line. If I'm giving the depreciation expense and the amortization expense, it's easy. All what I have to do is ignore them. But I am not. They are embedded in the 59,000. Therefore, I have to back them out. Let's take a look at the franchise. The franchise went from 32 to 24. The franchise was amortized for 8,000. It means with this 
with, within this 59,000, I have to back out 8,000 because this is a not, not a cash expense. Therefore, I add 8,000 of franchise because it's not a cash expense. Yes, I did took the expense, but it's not cash. If it was listed separately, I would have just simply ignored it. But since it's part of the 59, I have to back it out. Again, I'm starting with 59 as negative. If I started with 59 as positive, I would do the opposite. But I'm saying just to kind of let you know, 59 is cash paid. This is the expense. Let's convert it into how much cash paid for operation. So the franchise is done. Now I have to deal with this depreciation, which is a little bit unusual because accumulated depreciation went down. So if I look at my accumulated depreciation account for this exercise, it's a little bit unusual. It's not unusual, but it went from 80,000. I'm sorry, it went from 86,000 to 80,000. This is what I have the beginning and ending. It means overall the account went down. Well, the reason why is because I'm told I sold a plant asset that's fully depreciated. If that's the case, it was a $20,000 plant asset that's fully depreciated. Well, if you sold an asset, you have to remove its accumulated depreciation. Therefore, I went from 86. I reduced 86 by 20. So let's let me get my calculator. So I reduced my 86,000. 86,000. I started with that. I reduced it by 20,000 minus 20,000. And I should end up with 66. I end up with 80. Therefore, I am looking here for another credit. So if I find the difference between 66 and 80, I will find out that the depreciation that I took was 14,000. So this is basically I found, this is I find basically a plug. This was given. What is, where was it given? It was given here. It was given that the asset was sold. It was fully depreciated. Well, what does that mean? It means my depreciation was 14,000. It means embedded in this number again, another 14,000 that's non, not a cash expense. So I will add back this 14,000 as a non-cash expense. When I net them, I will find out that cash paid for operation is only 38,000. Therefore, cash paid for operation is 38,000. So what I did is I took, I took each line starting with sales, converted sales to cash sales, converted cost of goods sold to cash paid to customers, and converted operating expenses into cash paid for operation. Now, gain on sale of plant asset is a thousand. I ignore this. I ignore this because the gain is not a cash amount. The gain will be accounted for in the financing section. I ignore gains. I ignore losses. I ignore depreciation expense. I ignore amortization expense. Then you just said you ignore them. Why did you? So why did why did you why did you added eight thousand and added fourteen thousand? I had to add them because they were included in the 59. If they were listed separately, I would ignore them. Since they were included, I have to take them out. That's why I that's why I included them. Overall, what I did is now I prepare my statement of cash flow. Cash received from customers 181,000 computed here. Cash paid to suppliers 96,000 and cash paid for operation for operating the asset 38. If I net them out, cash paid for operating expense, net cash provided by operating expenses, 47,000. Simply put, notice my in net income was 26, my accrual net income, but cash provided from operating is 47, which is more, which is more. And the reason is we explained it because we expense 102, but we only paid 96. We expend 59, we only paid 38. But from the cash perspective, we received less cash from sales, but overall it was more than net income. So this is how you would prepare an operating uh, net um, operating section using the direct method of the statement of cash flows. Now in the next session, I would, I would look at the indirect method using the same example. I would also complete the complete cash flow statement using the indirect method because the only difference between direct method and indirect method is only the operating section. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs exercises, true false questions that's going to help you this important topic. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.